hey guys welcome to another episode of life with petali i hope you guys have been keeping well i'm so shocked that it's only two years to the end of the year yani i mean <laughs> two, you, months. What, what, what are you <laughs> two months it seems i'm already in 2024 yeah. Yeah, like... but this year has been very very brief i think for me i don't know about you yeah i know. like that <laughs> we are just digesting how fast this year has gone mm -hmm. and i hope you guys have had a wonderful um time since we last uh, you know were together on the last youtube video i hope you've been keeping well so today without further ado we'll be talking about something that you guys have been interested to find out so we'll be talking about um opportunities to work as a student especially as an international student what opportunities are there for you um, and how do you actually access some of these um, opportunities because we keep saying that studying and living abroad is quite expensive and you definitely need to plan and budget for that but what other opportunities do you have besides going to school as a student so my lovely lovely guest i will allow her to introduce herself although you guys have seen her in the previous video but she'll introduce herself and grace us with her wisdom uh, i'm here to learn also from her so yeah please take it away <laughs> Thank you guys i'm so excited that you you've been asking for this a such kind of information mm -hmm. when i was doing my application i didn't have such platforms for people I to know. you know yeah. uh, just help me understand what mm -hmm. the expectations how to prepare and how to go about it so mm -hmm. petal i really appreciate you for creating Thank platforms for you. people to watch and just engage and study abroad mm -hmm. So my name is Sheila Van de Graaf. I have a YouTube channel called she Impact with uh, Sheila Van de Graaf, and we talk about opportunities uh, cutting across. Now for this particular question, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. As the same way as you plan to study abroad, also you have to understand how to plan your finances. You know, how you're going to raise finances. Um, what's the situation uh, studying abroad and mm -hmm. which particular country. So I'll just share briefly. In the US, if you are an international student, mm -hmm. you are only allowed to work 20 hours a week mm -hmm. and within the university. Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to work outside the university. Mm -hmm. And 20 hours is during school days, mm -hmm. you know, sc school terms when this, uh, the school is in session, you can only work 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. When the school closes, that's during holiday, like summer holidays winter holidays so long as the school has closed and it's now on holiday you are allowed to work 40 hours a week and working in the university involves engaging uh you can work with different um you can have different works like you can get seven hours with this organization mm -hmm. 10 hours with this you know and you can balance so long as it adds mm -hmm. up to 20 hours and so 20 you're not hours. yeah you're not supposed you, you're not limited to just one organization mm -hmm. providing 20 hours for you and sorry to cut you short Sheila. is this a requirement by schools who put this requirement of just the limit of like 20 years i mean 20 hours so this is by the eyes the immigration especially okay. now i'm talking for the u.s mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. when you come to the u.s they yeah, um, the immigration officers mm -hmm. know exactly where you're going to mm -hmm. and they get information of what you're studying where mm -hmm. you're studying what mm -hmm. you're studying they know everything mm -hmm. so this is what i also want to tell you when you're mm -hmm. doing this um work it is legal because it's within the university mm -hmm. and i also want to advise you as a student don't give out your social security number because mm -hmm. somebody might take it and misuse it mm -hmm. and get jobs out there that will really work against your immigration status. Mm -hmm. So that's for students in the US. Students in Canada, you're allowed to work 40 hours. Ooh. Yeah, 40 hours either in school or outside the school. Oh, so yes. it's not just within the university like mm -hmm. in the US. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in Canada, but you have to stick by, they have their regulations, okay. which is very clear, straightforward mm -hmm. in the immigration website. Mm -hmm. But they, they expanded that. So it's an ex experiment for one year to mm -hmm. see how to see how it will work out because mm -hmm. of the uh, a lot of students who are experiencing uh, financial challenges yes, yes, and yes, at the yes. same time the country also needed more people to work to you know work, yeah, so labor. The, the labor mm -hmm. yeah market mm -hmm. was shrinking mm -hmm. so they've allowed students to work 40 hours a week mm -hmm. you are not limited to the university you can work wherever so long as you report your mm -hmm. hours and mm -hmm. all that okay. 
Uh, in UK, you're also allowed to work. Okay. So you can work, and even the spouses can work. So these other countries, here in the US, if you're an F1, your spouse cannot work. Mm -hmm. But in other countries, your spouses can work, mm -hmm. and you know you can leverage mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. uh, in Australia, it's also different. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's different. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know the regulations mm -hmm. of uh, how the, um, the regulations of that particular uni university, mm -hmm. a particular country, mm -hmm. and work within those regulations regulations okay. another thing that I always love sharing with mm -hmm. students who want to come and study abroad is that start it early the moment you've gotten admission mm -hmm. and you and uh, you you know probably now you're here in the US mm -hmm. and you know that you're coming to Colorado mm -hmm. and this university in Colorado or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. you go ahead and uh, reach out to the professors mm -hmm. ask them for so there are different forms of working in the university yes so you can work in as a research assistant. Okay. You don't need to have past experience of being a researcher. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no, no. They mm -hmm. will teach you because it's different. Mm -hmm. It's you know, you don't have to have that experience. You can also be a graduate assistant mm -hmm. in terms of you can help professors in doing coursework and all that, mm -hmm. and that's always really big money. You can also work in in terms of facilities like work in the library, arranging books mm -hmm. and all that. You can mm -hmm. also work in the dining hall serving students and you know and students are doing it so you just get to know what kind of work you want to do mm -hmm. and as i said just you can get five hours in the gym five hours in the library ten hours with the professor there are some like for me i was a research assistant and i was working for the c center i was so lucky to get 20 hours a week 20 mm -hmm. hours a week for mm -hmm. this particular um c center mm -hmm. and 40 hours during my holiday, so mm -hmm. it was easy for me. Mm -hmm. Here, students maneuver, mm -hmm. so you can maneuver. So mm -hmm. reach out in good time. Reach mm -hmm. out to your professors. Tell mm -hmm. them you'd want to do um, work with them, yeah. and they'll always direct you in terms of which institution, which uh, department, yes. which you know has opportunities yes, yes. for you mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they'll ask you for once you come in, uh, you'll definitely open up ba your bank account mm -hmm. you don't need any information to open your you just need your passport mm -hmm. and your i-20 if mm -hmm. you're in the u.s okay yeah so you don't need your social security number you don't need anything and mm -hmm. that's you know and then you can when here in the u.s you can also get your id mm -hmm. so that you don't walk around with your passport, passport so you get an yeah. id mm -hmm. and you can also get your driving license, license. so your driving mm -hmm. license can you know double up as, as your id, ID. Mm -hmm. yeah so these are resources that you will need especially when you're working because mm -hmm. it's very dangerous to walk around with your passports so mm -hmm. i always say when people ask me about how to work and all mm -hmm. that also emphasize on the importance of having a bank mm -hmm. uh a bank, not a bank, <laughs> a bank. <laughs> Important yeah, point there. Yeah. I remember there's a friend of mine who back in 2016 mm -hmm. we were in one of the you know states and she said she he told one of the taxi guys to take him to the to the bank mm -hmm. and he was taken to a river bank so yeah oh my so, goodness so, river, so the, the guy was confused oh, yeah. which 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 bank do you want to go to oh, we have so many wow. banks here <laughs> then it's like the nearest bank so it was taken to the nearest river bank mm -hmm. so oh. here it's bank you know <laughs> bank. bank yeah Same so bank. In, yeah you need to, yeah so working in the u.s and working studying abroad is is very good because it builds up on yes. your professional experience mm -hmm. it builds up on how to leverage in terms of paying your accommodation yes. Yes. paying because surviving For here sure. it's so uh, difficult to so experience it for uh, a few months <laughs> maybe i'll tell the full story after yes, i have yes, processed yes, yes, yes. yeah so it's really really important that by the time you come to the u.s you already have some of those um professors some of those institutions mm -hmm. ready for you mm -hmm. so that you don't come and you still you mm -hmm. know so these things you can always do it while you're still in your various countries yes yeah you're sure. still in your various countries mm -hmm. you can always and, apply for uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i think also getting some of these opportunities beforehand can give you leverage when you go for your like when you're applying for your yes. visa yes because sometimes they, they really want to know how you'll finance your stay here and your tuition because it's quite expensive so well it's good to have that yeah. um when you're going for before you go for your visa interview mm -hmm. 
fantastic mm -hmm. but my advice is mm -hmm. don't share with the uh, immigration officer mm -hmm. when they ask you how you're going to survive then you say i'm going to be a research assistant yeah it's not the enough. reason being is mm -hmm. that you're going to appear like you're going to be a burden to oh. the U united states or yeah. to the country you're going in you will put it in terms of I have secured this research assistant mm -hmm. with this professor because I love the institution sure. and I love what they are doing. So okay. you package it in terms of you're going to learn, to learn but not to rely go. on it mm -hmm. as a source of income because okay. they can challenge you and say, what if they, they by the time you go, yeah. they already picked another student? Personal so how are you going to? You know, so that can That's work true. against you. Okay. Yeah, Thank but you it's a good one too. to package yourself yeah, in as, terms of you've gone further and mm -hmm. you secured that mm -hmm. and you you know you're good mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mm. That's definitely a good tip there. <laughs> so guys, uh, feel free to leave us more questions. We'll yeah. Come and talk about just the nitty gritties of studying and living abroad. And I know one of you asked about in detail about working abroad. How does that look like for students? Mm. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please comment down below if you found this information uh, helpful to you. And if you have any other questions regarding studying abroad, I'll let Sheila do her last remarks and tell you what she's doing with study abroad. I've had rumors about a course that's <laughs> coming up. So I'll just let her uh, tell you guys about um, what she's doing currently and also where she can, where you can find her on on social media and maybe she can share a contact a number mm. that you can easily reach her through whatsapp in case you need more one-on-one -on -one tailored, tailored um help okay awesome yeah also before i i do the last mm -hmm. remarks mm -hmm. i also want to mention that in various countries there's so many resources for international students mm -hmm. i remember when i came in i was able to get uh, a pantry food pantry mm -hmm. and they would supply me with free food for some time so wow. you can also take advantage of yes, that yes. within the university mm -hmm. we have also uh, the department that helps students with food mm -hmm. so you can go and pick eggs you can go and pick uh, flour mm -hmm. beans and all that so mm -hmm. they have so take mm -hmm. advantage of such um, mm -hmm. because paying rent and all that you'll yeah. not even have much to pay for your food for sure. so take advantage of that and also as an international student you can also invest so if you mm -hmm. start working and you see you have a lot of money yes you can invest in terms of people have even bought homes here as Imagine students that. so that's uh, by the way I hope anyway that I, <laughs> <laughs> we have study abroad uh, course that has helped so many students to be you know well equipped for on how to come and study abroad it's a four weeks course it's very very enjoyable we've seen the the good results out of it mm -hmm. and the demand is so high i don't i'm not sure whether we still have space oh, but if you're interested oh. just type in the comment mm -hmm. interested and we're going to give you full information mm -hmm. maybe they can leave an email address yes uh so my number is plus two five four seven two seven two eight two three one seven if you have if you want the us number i'm gonna read the us number because i still don't have um this is a new number for specifically for this uh this program so it's plus one seven two zero three nine seven zero nine six two you can also reach uh, leave uh, um, an email with info at impactglobal.co.ke. We'll give you all the information about study abroad. We have various services that will help you and support you through the journey. We've seen really good success stories and we don't want you to be left behind. If you want to watch my YouTube, it's Impact with Sheila DeGraff. Thank you so much and thank you for providing thank these you. wonderful thank platforms. You, you guys are so lucky. It's I hope you subscribe. To have I hope you. <laughs> thank you. I know your schedule is ever busy. Yes. But to have you do this with us again, we are absolutely grateful. If it's I were you honor. guys, I would pull my laptop or my phone and email already and just <laughs> say I'm interested because of the few slots that are yeah. remaining. And like I keep saying, I'm a beneficiary of study mm -hmm. um, of Impact Global. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine first time application and I got accepted in all the four universities yeah. I applied. So give it a shot you will not regret and you got scholarship and, and i got gotten scholarship, more scholarship and i've well. gotten yeah, more scholarship so story this. that's building and yeah. that will come to you very very, yeah, very very soon very 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 soon so guys it's happening it's possible don't let your fears of people tell you that you can't 
come and further your studies. Don't even let the the thing about finances bother you. Just mm-hmm. do what you need to do on your part and you'll be surprised at what God can do, you know. So it's always a pleasure coming to you guys and we'll see you in the next we'll see you or I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Okay, bye for real. <laughs>